So how you can bring an external file in Eclipse, you can right click and you can go to import. That's one way of doing it. You can go to general file system. You can browse a directory and then you can pick whichever file you want to pick. That's one way to do that. The other way to do that would be to simply bring about your desktop and grab the file that you want and you can right click copy on it and then you can right click on the source and you can paste. That's another way to do that and they're also going to bring it in. So you just right click copy and then you come here right, right click paste or you can drag and drop. There are many ways of doing it. So again, either way you have the image brought into your source folder. Now let's save this example that we have open stacked GUI items. Let's save it as Java FX image view. And we will going to rename the file JavaFX image view. We're going to get rid of all these circles and labels. We're going to get rid of all these pain dot at children. Just get rid of all of that. I'm still leaving my pane as pane, but I don't want to do a stacked pane. The reason is I want to have multiple images and otherwise they'll all be stacked on top of each other. I don't want to do that. I rather want my images to come in a horizontal box so that they're all in one line. So I'm going to change my pane from stack pane to H box. And then if I want, I can basically give sizing that I want them to be this much apart from each other. It could be 10, 15, whatever. Some kind of a spacing. After that, if I wish, I can set some other properties too. But I want to start building my images. So I'll use the image class. And I'm going to use this us.jpg image. Again, you have to organize your imports. And this is the image class that does comes from your scene, javafx.scene.image package. And then to the pane, you will going to get its children and you will add the image. Um, you have to make sure that you add the image because you can't add it directly like that. New image view. You have to use the image view class from the javafx.scene package to, to add an image to the pane. So you have to uh, cast your image into an image view object before you can add it to your pane. Save the changes and run. And you should now be able to see the flag. Now the next thing we would like to learn is, we would like to add another image. But instead of using the image class, what if I want to directly use the image view class? You know, that could be a valid question. What if I want to directly use the image view class? So let's try to do that. Let's create an image view object. We're going to call this one img2 equals to new image view object. And we're going to give it the image. Okay, so that's basically how you do it. You create an image object first. You can give it to an image view and then you can assign that image view to the pane. So again, we can, uh, but this time you do not have to do casting when you're adding 
because the object is already in image view type. So now let me try to run this and you can see that there are two images right next to each other of the same flag. One is coming through image, casted to image view, one is casted before adding, one is casting it during adding. Now we will going to add a property for the second image and that would be I want my second image to set fit its height to 110 and I would like to set fit its width to 110. So I'm basically setting its height and width to 110. So I want to create a square. Instead of a rectangular flag, I'm creating a squarish flag. So now when I run it, you will notice that the second occurrence of the flag is smaller than the first one because I've locked it into 110 by 110. Okay, let's try to create another image view. So let's simply uh, copy this line, line 18, and paste it again. And we're going to change this 2 to a 3. And we're going to add this exactly the same way to the pane as before. The only difference now I want to do is I want to be able to rotate the image on axis. Okay, so we're going to do image 3 dot set and here's a function called rotate and we're going to give it a value let's say 60 degrees so I want to ro rotate on 60 degrees axis and now let's run it and here you can see that is rotated on 60 degrees 